Since the involvement of NASCAR superstars Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kevin Harvick, Jeff Burton, and Justin Marks, the notoriety of the Cars Tour and its competitors has skyrocketed. The racing speaks for itself because it's true, grassroots, hard-nosed late model racing at its best. And we're here to bring that action to light. This is On Tour. Welcome to episode two of On Tour. My name is Buddy Pulley, host of the Big Motor Small Blade podcast. Joined, of course by FrontStretch.com's lead car store reporter, Chase Folsom, or as we know him on this channel, is Chuck. Uh, Chuck, how you doing, man? They let us back for uh, for a second episode, man. Pat yourself on the back. Good oh, boy. I yeah. know. Yeah. I know. I cannot believe they let us two clowns get back on air. <laughs> Dude, I, I can't either. Big thank you to Big Motor Small Blade for, for letting us... Uh, do this again uh if you don't get that joke well then you should subscribe um chuck we're covering the orange crush 200 at wake at uh orange county speedway that happened this past friday night was well, supposed to happen this past thursday obviously mother nature's a you know what um it was a race for a great cause uh benefiting ward burton's wildlife foundation talk a little bit about about the race and how great it was for the fans and everybody involved because you were there with boots on the ground. Yeah. So first of all, the race was scheduled for Thursday night. Obviously got moved Friday night because the weather not ideal. Car count was a little lower than it was expected to be because of that. Although it was expected. Um, I don't remember exactly what the expected number was. I know we had 23 in total show up. Oh. There was, there was a couple guys that I noticed like, um, Peyton Sellers wasn't there, at least was racing. It, was it just they they were gonna plan on racing somewhere else? Pretty for, much. For, yeah, just maybe had other had other plans, and once it gets moved to Friday night yeah. instead of Thursday night, those are maybe guys there, racing but. for maybe the national. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. um, I mean, and for for the future, I think Friday night would be better. I think it worked great. Yeah. Um. I'm sure they had their own logistical reasons for doing Thursday night, but whatever. And I'm sure part of that had to do with, I did want to talk about this. So they're um, basically Orange County rented out the track to them. Okay. There was no Orange County workers there at all. Everybody oh, that was working, okay. everything had on Warburton Wildlife Foundation shirts, hats, gear, lanyards, whatever. It was all of Ward's people that they basically rented out the racetrack for a night and they got all the proceeds from everything as far as I understand. Oh, wow. So That's awesome. Basically, because um, there's a couple different ways you can have an event at a racetrack. There's um, the method where pretty much you, the track can make all the money, yeah. but you run the risk of having a low car count and still having to pay the purse and not having yeah. many people there. Or you can have the series pay you up front just a base fee, mm -hmm. and then they come in and they get all the proceeds for everything. It's a way more complex definition for how it works, but that's just kind of a baseline. Yeah. And that's pretty much what they did is they rented out the track for the night. Um, program ran great. They got it started at 630. That's the earliest I've ever been to a late model stock car race that it started. Um <laughs> It was it was really We're nice. Working on it. <laughs> it was really really nice actually, yeah. and there was there was no support division, so that had had a little bit to do with it. Yeah. But we we were done racing by eight thirty. Wow. That that never happens. I was about to say. So yeah. for for an event that you want to bring your small children to, just to have them watch a race on a Friday night and still be home at a decent time, it was absolutely perfect because little Johnny was home before bedtime at nine o'clock. Um. They did a they did an autograph session that was, I mean those guys had to have been up there for close to an hour. Wow, oh, like, that's awesome. Some of the drivers mentioned it like later on that it it felt like it not in a bad way but it felt like it never ended. Like yeah, they just they got to all the drivers. It goes both ways. The drivers get to interact with fans and that's how they create a fan base. And the fans get to interact with drivers and they get to learn who these guys are that may not have as much notoriety outside of the little niche that is late model stock racing. Yeah. So that's awesome. Uh, it was a one day show. So it was all, they got both practice and happy hour done by, I think they were done practicing by three 30. They qualified at, or no, they were done practicing by about three. They qualified at three forty-five. 
they lined them up and raced at 6 30 200 laps um they had hospitality for the media and vip it was chuck stuff his face with some food <sighs> no actually <laughs> I did not i did not i had a cookie that's it um of course you had a cookie <laughs> you're always searching for some cookies <laughs> whatever um i mean there's not really much to complain about like it was yeah. everything well we don't have to complain this isn't the big everything you, everything you want <laughs> everything you want from a local short track event and it all went to a great cause with ward's yeah. wildlife foundation and oh yeah they ran a race too and it was fantastic so yeah. let, let's talk about the race yeah, um, Deke, Deke McCaskill, he highlighted a lot of things you just said there, uh, how great the event was. I, I, I noticed, Man, racing is fun that. when you win. Uh, yeah, this so, race, I mean, so no, I'm happy that uh, too, as far as, Jeb uh, got his call going good. A lot of drivers there that I already had notoriety. Touched the wall right you know, here at the Model track bar well early in the night. Star but power out here. Ward Burton, obviously. It, was it wasn't lap three, race. but his son lap Jeb three. was there. Anyway, Even whatever it was, me and the car have been struggling ever since we got here, but we finished. I mean, it brought out we finished the top 15. So Jeb if Jeff called and he had both his cars in one piece. You didn't destroy it. That's good. So thanks for everything Jeb did to make this happen. Thanks for all the fans and y'all coming out. Awesome show. Um, appreciate all the fans, like Dad said. Career Tank Lines, Rogers, Heating and Cooling. Dad already named everybody else. Just without the fans and the partners and the competitors and the teams, uh, we wouldn't be able to do this. And I feel like our purse was very respectable. I mean, uh, 17th was $1,500. So, um, and one set of tires, hopefully some uh, other tracks will see the things we're doing because it costs a lot of money to race these race cars. That's why I don't run them a lot, to be honest. Uh, I, it just costs a lot of money. So uh, appreciate everybody, and uh, we'll get Dad back in the car. We'll you heard Jed say it right there, uh, good purse. He said, what, 17th paid $1,500? I mean, that's good tire money i think was the exact quote which is for sure um and he said that was very important to them and it showed that you know it brought out weight model stocks best out there yeah i mean that's that's really good for a late model yeah. stock race um these cars i know he mentioned if you go watch the full interview at front stretch he mentions these cars cost a lot of money to run like you may not realize this but it's not cheap just because they're running local short tracks doesn't make it cheap at all. And if you want to stack it up against a car store race, a regular car store race, seven to eight thousand win. So yeah. when the winner pays fifteen thousand, you're looking at almost, if not double, what it pays to win a car store race. That's going to attract some big names. And the fact that the purse was still distributed well down through the field shows that they had a lot of partners on board with this race for a good cause as we mentioned earlier and um when you got partners on board to support your cause and you can pay that kind of money the event's going to thrive and it's going to keep coming back i know they said they want to do it again next year i hope they do um it was like it was a really fun event it's going to pay well for the drivers it pays off for the teams there's no reason we shouldn't keep doing it again every year for sure for sure um, and yeah, we obviously heard from our old war button, uh, cat skid steel loader, um, out there. You should, have, should have gotten them to say that, <laughs> um, but yeah, let, let's see who took home that 15 K and who took home the rest of the money in these results. Taking a look at your results now from the Rogers heating and cooling orange crush 200 benefiting the Ward Burton Wildlife Foundation. It was Caden Honeycutt picking up the $15,000 win, followed by Deke McCaskill coming home second, and Bobby McCarty leading the first 100 laps but having to settle for third. Cade Brown would come home fourth, and local driver Camden Gully would round out the top five. Jeb Burton and his return to a late model stock car would bring it home sixth, with Trevor Ward coming home seventh, three-time Orange County track champion Terry Deese coming home eighth, Timothy Peters back in the driver's seat once again would finish ninth, and car store regular Chase Burrow rounded out the top 10. Mike Looney brought the number 87 home in 11th, with Blake Stallings in 12th, car store regular Logan Clark in 13th, Stacy Purrier back in the driver's seat once again in 14th, and Ward Burton's return to a race car would result with him in 15th. Former NASCAR Cup Series winner Jeremy Mayfield brought the car home in 16th, 
with Andrew Patterson 17th. Falling out of the race was Sam Yarborough coming home 18th. Brent Cruz, who put in a strong run all night, would have a late mechanical failure and settle for 19th. Ronnie Bassett Jr. made contact with the Turn 1 wall and would come home 20th. 1993 NASCAR National Champion Barry Beggerly would have to settle for 21st. Landon Huffman with fuel pickup issues in 22nd. And Buddy Isles Jr. would come home 23rd. Aside from the winner, the big story was Bobby McCarty. He led all 100 laps of the first half of the Orange Crush 200, but bit the pill and pulled an eight. And that kind of screwed the pooch of his race there. Uh, obviously, he comes up short, finishing third. Chuck caught up with him after the race. Ford and, and Buck and everybody did a great deal this week this weekend i mean this was a really cool show we had a great time but um it could be cleaned up a little bit there was a few restarts there after the halfway break where you didn't know if they picked the top or the bottom because they just run the cone over um and we picked the top and we went from 8th to 13th at, at some point and then we just kept getting boxed in and we finally got to where we could start making some moves and we got up to third and, and i run them down i just burned everything up trying to catch them and I, overall in late model racing what's your opinion on redraws and if they're going to do them how should they work they shouldn't do them at all i mean especially on these long races like this i mean you're you're playing a riding game um so you're kind of setting yourself up thank you um you're setting yourself up for the the second 100 um i'm not a fan of redraws but if we're going to do it this is how it needs to be done because every time we go to these 200 lap races and they're saying, oh, we're doing a redraw of the top 10, somewhere in the top 10, we're going to draw a peel. It's always six, eight, six or eight, maybe 10. Um, so you play that game. You know that's what it's going to be. So you try to be anywhere from six to 10th and just hope you get lucky. We heard Bobby there comment on the redraws and how we maybe shouldn't do them at some of these longer races. Chuck, what's your opinion on redraws? So... Yeah, just to go back and go over pretty much all of Bobby's night. Um, fastest in practice, lights out, fastest in qualifying. And when they dropped the green, he took off. And he had probably a whole straightaway lead over Caden Honeycutt at some point during the first 100 laps. He was he was, he was, was taking him out behind the woodshed in the first 100 laps. It was, it was crazy to see how much faster his car was than everybody else's. And then he draws the eight. And I was actually unaware of how the redraw was going to work. So basically what they did is the leader draws the pill and wherever they draw, that's where they're going to restart. And that's it. That's all the invert is. So Caden Honeycutt went from second to the lead and Bobby McCarty goes from the lead to eighth. Obviously eighth is just about as worse as you can draw. It was, it was the worst number in oh, there. Oh no. He was he was having fun with it post race, but all his guys were coming up and calling him a non drawn sob. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm in agreement with him. I don't think that redraw the team. You think he's a non drawn sob? Do what? I said him or the team. You think he's a non drawn sob? The, no, the team was calling him that. <laughs> oh, I didn't I'm just that. Kidding. I, didn't say I asked him about it, but I didn't say that. Um, I'm sure he wouldn't have cared if I did, but no, he he made a good point. Where if, if they're going to do them, that's the best way to do it. Because the alternative is they say, okay, like he says, we're going to re we're going to invert the field from 6th through 10th and you're yeah. going to draw for that. Well, then you got the best cars sandbagging for 100 laps trying to be six through 10th yeah hoping they get inverted to the front mm -hmm. in this case the guy out front is just kind of like okay well i could restart in the lead i could restart eighth i have the best car if i'm out front so yeah. i've made my bed but i still don't think we should do it i don't think yeah. I... if you want to have good racing you need to have the fastest cars up front mm -hmm. and i don't think we need I guess in this case, it's a gimmick. We don't really need a gimmick yeah. to showcase good race cars. Because at the end of the day, if Hayden Honeycutt had done the redraw or Deke McCaskill, the results would have been the same mm -hmm. because the three of them were so similar in pace at the end of the race that it didn't matter. The only thing that mattered was who was out front. 
Yeah. And it sounds bad. It sounds like, oh, we got a Cup Series can't pass problem, but it's just because their cars were so equal, they were going to yeah. burn up their stuff trying to get around each other. Yeah. I've always and, thought a good I've always thought a good invert would be, you know, take the top 10, you can invert it if you really want to invert. I like you said it's probably useless, but take the top 10, pay a bunch of money at the halfway break to make them race for it, but invert them all at the end of it, but I mean, especially for a race like this that is just for charity and for for the fans. I can understand that, but yeah, they're they're very gimmicky. Um but uh hey, Caden Honeycutt obviously took home the victory um, over one of Orange County's best in Deke McCaskill um, and scores his first late model stock victory in almost two years since ace in 2022. And he took home the 15 K Chuck, you talked to him after the race. Let's play that. Man, it's tough. Like, uh, um, that's probably the hardest laps I've driven in, in a long time just because of how much is on the line and how much I've wanted to win so freaking bad and, and how much I haven't won. And this, this win right here definitely helps me out um, to carry momentum to the cars race back here for April 20th. So um, we'll go on to Martinsville next week, the Nice, nice Motorsports guys, try to win a truck race, and then go on to Hickory Saturday with uh, the Maverick Page group. So uh, I'm just going to take the momentum and ride with it and try to win as many races as we can this year now. You mentioned that car source race coming up here on April 20th. That race is double the money, 30 grand to win. What's it like knowing you have this good of a piece coming back here in a month? Well, now that you said it's 30 grand, I thought it was like 10, but uh, <laughs> man, we, I, I think we'll have a good piece, especially coming back. Um, we're gonna have to be on a different compound, so we'll be on the SD2. So we'll go back to our notes and go through our testing when we test it here with SD2s. All right, so we heard there, Caden, getting used to the, the difference in tire there. Chuck, explain the difference between the car store tire and what the traditional late model tire is. So I'm just going to full disclosure here. I'm not an engineer and I'm not a rocket scientist, so I can't no, give you a really? 100% definition. <laughs> not that any of you thought that just to clear up any misconception. You look like a tire um, guy. If I'm, uh, if I'm being honest, okay. you look like you got a ru bunch of rubber down here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much the tires they ran Friday night yeah. is just what the Cars Tour used to run. It's a softer yeah. compound tire. Obviously, the Cars Tour, we talked about after, the, after Southern National, they went to the little bit harder compound tire this year. So they pretty much just kind of had to do what they've always known to do and take care of their stuff. Yeah. Uh, Friday night, I think the bigger challenge is going to be when they go back there and run 200 laps again in April for the Cars yeah. Tour race. Uh, is you're going to be 200 laps, and how do you manage a harder tire? How much harder can you go throughout the race? I think all three of them have a distinct advantage over the rest of the field, knowing, A, we've already tried it out with a softer tire. We know you know, kind of what the track's going to give us. It's only a month's difference. The weather isn't really going to be that much different because it wasn't cold. Yeah, yeah it was pretty, it was, it was nice. So the weather is going to be comparable. And they all three had really great race cars. I mean, Bobby yeah. said that he's never been good there. And to have a car that good was great for him. Obviously, Deke's always been good there. And now he knows, okay, we got a good piece. And Caden just, now he has all the confidence in the world. Yeah. going into that race and monkey off his back i think don't hold me to this he might be running double duty that night okay. um because i'm pretty sure he told me after southern national he was full time with the pros wow i All right. i doubt he's gonna pass up a late model stock race that's that much money so he's probably running double duty which he's gonna have to run the pro race first that's only gonna help him yeah the three of them have to be other than, you know, the obvious, Carson Quapple, Connor Hall, Butterbean, they all exist. But the three of them have to be right up there as favorites to win this race. Just because they just went and ran a 200-lap test run. Yep. And they were all outstanding at the end of that race. Deke almost got around Caden. I, I mean, so many times. For about 10 laps, they were door-to-door -door coming off a of two and coming off a of four. And ultimately, with the softer tire, he just wore his stuff out. He burned up his right rear trying to get underneath him. If he had just gotten to his left front, I think he could have gotten him. He could have yeah. 
shuffled him up the track a little bit in three. He almost got there one time, and then he pushed hard off a of four and kicked it sideways, and that was all she wrote after that. Katie pretty much just drove away. But I think, going back to what I said earlier, if, if you have a restart and any of the three of them get out front, it's over because they were so equal, and the tire – I think the harder tire will actually benefit them in a way that they'll be able to race a little more because Orange, because Orange County is a multi-groove racetrack. You can run the top, you can run the bottom, you can diamond it. There's a lot of options there. So if they're not as worried about, not as worried, they'll still be worried, but not as worried about burning up their right rear, yeah. I think it'll put on a great race. Yeah, and they definitely have the most experience racing up at the front and racing hard. Um yeah, Orange County, great racetrack. Uh, I look forward to going there for the Cars Tour race. I really, really kicking myself for not being able to make it, make it uh, on Friday night. Uh, but yeah, let's hear a word from our our partners here at uh, FrontStretch.com, and we'll move on with the show. FrontStretch.com is where you'll find all your racing content in one place for free. They have it all from NASCAR to F1 to IndyCar, grassroots racing, and even I racing. Front Stretch has you covered with daily news for every series, weekly columns, and even on-site coverage at every NASCAR and Cars Tour event. Head over to FrontStretch.com, subscribe to their YouTube page, and give them a follow on X to get your daily fix on all things motorsports. So yeah, thank you, buddy, for that. And thank you, big shout out to FrontStretch.com for allowing us to use the content that I get for them at the racetrack. Um, thank them for letting me go to the racetrack in general. If you, <laughs> if you want to see the full interviews of anything you saw on this show or any previous shows or any future shows you may watch, go check out FrontStretch.com or FrontStretch.com's YouTube channel. Um, any columns we write with the car store as well will be on FrontStretch.com, so go support them over there so we can keep doing this here. For sure, for sure. And uh, those columns written by Chuck himself. He's under a name Chase Folsom, so make sure you look out for that. Um but we heard Kaden talk about Kaden talk about um, the uh, the tire and getting used to that. Speaking of getting used to things, Bubba Pollard running the Xfinity race at Richmond and having himself a hell of a run. He finished sixth in his Xfinity Series debut on Saturday. It was actually JRM's best finish of this year. So shout out to Bubba Pollard for that. Um, and just just a cool story. Bubba being a late model standout, obviously a huge opportunity for him. Chuck, talk about that. So, yeah, everybody, if you're any bit involved in the short track late model world, you know who Bubba Pollard is. He's won quite literally everything there is to win in a super late model, except the Snowball Derby. Yep. Uh, he'll get it one of these days. He's won everything else winchester all american at nashville like he he won wilkesboro last year yeah. in the asa race he's the best there is of our generation um to see him in an xfinity car i mean xfinity cars have always been described as um a super late model with a big heavy super late model with a lot of horsepower yeah. so i wasn't really surprised to see him run well i'm glad he did i hope he gets more opportunities you know he talked post-race about iowa possibly being open that'd be another track that would be a perfect fit for him i think the the ratio power to track length would honestly probably fit him better at iowa yeah. he'd be able to let it rip a little more yeah he said a few things after the race um that really stuck out to me he mentioned how one how thankful he is for the opportunity because there's a lot of great race car drivers that we never know their names, you know, and he's a hundred percent right in that. Um, but even as humble as he is to get the opportunity, he didn't feel like he overachieved. He said overachieving, overachieving would be winning. Um, Bubba Paul is a, a racer and a damn good one and expects to win. So that's, that's awesome to hear from him. Um, and it means a lot to the sport for a guy like this to get a shot um we we saw you know josh berries of the world you know kind of paved the way uh especially through the jrm program um and it, it shows how much it means when guys like kyle bush and josh berry speak out about this and 
speak about how hard he works and how much they respect him as a racer. And Josh, especially much like Bubba, like I said, came through the JRM ranks and also made one of his first Xfinity starts at Richmond of all places. And, you know, ran up there in the top five, top 10. Um, like you said, he mentioned I was open. So he needs some sponsorship to, uh, to try to run that. That'd be really cool. But, uh, yeah, great story for Bubba Pollard. Bubba Pollard isn't the only late model standout that's getting a shot in that JRM 88 car. Carson Quapple will make his Xfinity debut this weekend at Martinsville. Chuck's going to be covering that, of course, um, and we'll talk about it the next week. Uh, I got a question for you, though, Chuck. Comparably, what... Uh, over under, who's going to do better, Bubba Pollard or uh, or Carson Quapple? So that's tough. Yeah, it's tough because yeah. that's why I ask you the I'd, tough question. I'd You're say I know, right? Boy, media I'd say boy. I'd say both of them are running at tracks that are favorable to their driving style. I'll Very give them much that. So. Very much so. Carson Carson is no stranger to Martinsville by any nope. means. He's Dang near won the, the 300, 300 yeah. two years in a row. He's finished second and third. So uh, he knows how to get around that place. And same situation as Bubba, just in a more extreme case. A little bit heavier, well, a lot bit, a lot of bit heavier car and a lot more power this week. But he's a damn good race car driver, just like Bubba Pollard is. I'm going to say worse. Just because sixth is a tall order. Yeah. I think he can I absolutely think he can get a top ten if he doesn't get run over and used up. I which, think that's the key right there. Which you know that tends to happen in Martinsville Xfinity races. Yeah. If if he can keep all four corners on the race car for three hundred laps, then I think it's three hundred laps this weekend. Yes. Then I think Two, he can finish yeah. top ten. I yeah. if will I be surprised if he does better than sixth? No. I'm going to say worse than sixth, but still top 10. Uh, another guy, just a quick shout out. Mason Diaz is filling in for Carson in the Cars Tour this weekend in that number eight car for yep. JRM. That's a big deal. And why is it a big deal? Because anybody that gets a shot in a JRM car is a big deal. And yeah. Mason Diaz, when you get handpicked by Dale Earnhardt Jr. to fill in in one of his cars when his other driver is driving one of his other cars – you got a lot of eyes on you and a lot of weight on your shoulders to go perform. Mason Diaz is a humble guy. He's a dang good race car driver. For those that may not know, he's the defending winner at Hickory from last summer. So he knows how to get around Hickory. It's one of his best racetracks. I'm very curious to see how he does on Saturday night. Obviously, I won't be there. My buddy Trenton Warsham will be filling in for me with front stretch at that car store race. I'll be at Martinsville all weekend. But should he win that race or even finish top three, top five, you could be looking at Carson Quapple's replacement in that number eight car this weekend. Yeah. So keep your eyes on that while you're watching the uh, Xfinity race Saturday night. Go ahead and pull up Flow Race and watch some car store at Hickory as well. And make sure to tune in to us after, and we're definitely going to cover that. I mean, hell, I think I I might could have a shot in a JRM late model <laughs> stock. Uh, but, yeah, just quick round of applause to Dale Earnhardt Jr. for all he's doing for, for the late model uh, community there. Uh, that's all we got for this week, folks. Um, like you said, we, we, we'll we be back next week. We won't have a, a uh, month-long hiatus, hopefully. Mother Nature plays nice, and we could do that. But before we go, uh, just quick thanks again to FrontStretch.com. Make sure you subscribe to the Big Motor Small Blade YouTube channel. Check out the Big Motor Small Blade podcast. Um, and thank you to Chuck. Thank you to myself. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome, buddy. Um, and uh, enjoy some pure sound before we get out of here.
Thank you.